My name is LaToya Bass Barnes and I am a certified yoga instructor, registered with Yoga Alliance, and I'm the owner and lead instructor at the Soul of Yogi Yoga and Wellness. I lead most of the classes. Um, we teach different styles of yoga, um, everything from gentle yoga, yin yoga, uh, vinyasa yoga, we even teach kids yoga, um, and we also do meditation classes and workshops um, every once in a while in the community. Yoga actually saved my life. Um, I started practicing yoga back in uh, around 2011 and um, as a mother of four children and wife to a very busy dentist, I um, had a lot of anxiety just trying to hold things together. You know, there's a lot of pressure when you're a mom and a wife and um, I stumbled upon yoga and got deeper into the practice and into the meditative aspect of it. Yoga is addicting once you start and you begin to connect to yourself and relax and see that just through simple breathing and maybe lying on your back and putting your hands on your heart, you can release stress and release anxiety and fear. You never want to stray away from that. Constantly hearing that black people don't do yoga or, you know, it's not for us. And I fight against that stereotype every single day because Especially when I hear it from, you know, black people, I'm like, oh, black people don't do yoga. Ooh, I'm black, you know. Um, and that was part of the reason why I opened this studio because, you know, I, I understand that the stereotype or what you see in social media is not black people or very many people of color at all practicing yoga. Um, there is a very biased opinion as to who yoga is for or who should do yoga and who represents yoga. And so um, diversity and inclusion are very important to me, especially in my studio, specifically to people of color. Um, let's get it out of our heads that yoga and wellness overall are not for us. It's absolutely for us. Anything that is going to connect us to ourselves and more importantly to each other on a deeper and a higher level is absolutely for us. Um, and I understand that a lot of black people in general are uncomfortable walking into a space where they may be the only black person. I mean, historically, that just hasn't been a comfortable situation for us. But um, I'm here, I am a black yogi, I'm a black yoga studio owner. Um, this is a space for everyone, but specifically, I created this space so that people could feel like they have a place where they can come and belong. It's a challenge to constantly prove that um, I'm just as skilled or talented as my counterparts. But I don't worry about that. I just tell people come to my classes, you know, and you'll see I'm just as good, if not, you know, more qualified than my competitors. I knew when I first started practicing yoga that eventually I would want to have my own studio. Um, but I was met with a lot of resistance. It took me about probably a year and a half to actually find a spot um, and to find a landlord that would lease to me. Um, I remember putting in an application for um, a location for the studio and the landlord made me jump through so many hoops. I mean, he wanted six months of my bank statements. He wanted, you know, just all types of different records. I guess to prove to him that I would be able to sustain the business. When I walk into a place as a future business owner. I mean, I know I look young for my age, um, and I sometimes got the impression that when I go into these places, they're like, oh, who is this young black girl trying to, you know, come and lease my space? And so I always felt like I had to prove to them that I'm gonna be able to pay my rent, you know, I'm gonna be a loyal and responsible tenant. Um, but I was turned down by quite a few people before I just so happened to stumble upon this place. and. Thank God, you know, they're wonderful people. My landlords are, um, they're young, they're progressive, they're open-minded, and they gave me a chance. And the studio has been growing and thriving ever since. I've had quite the life that has thrown a few curveballs my way. And so I'm used to having to work very, very hard, um, especially as a woman of color, you know, there's always this pressure to feel like you have to go above and beyond to prove that you're worthy. But I can honestly say um, this was a journey that I knew I was embarking on and I always knew that I would have my own studio. So 
this was just part of that journey. It doesn't matter where you go. If you're a person of color at one point in time or another, you're gonna encounter someone who's prejudiced or racist or you know, a bigot or biased. Um, but that's everywhere that you go. And I can't honestly say that here on the coast, I've experienced an overabundance of that. Um, I've always felt really welcome here. I'm glad I moved here from South Florida. It's a wonderful place to raise children and I have made the Gulf Coast my home and I'm happy to be here. I'm comfortable here. There is one thing that I could say to my not as melanated brothers and sisters. Stop saying that you don't see color because you see color. That's the first identifying factor that your eyes take in when you put your eyes on someone. So I feel like when you say you don't see color, it's kind of dismissing um, the fact that we all have differences, whether it's cultural, um, whether it's physical differences, whether it's socioeconomic differences. And stop pretending that these differences don't exist. It's okay for us to be different. We don't always have to agree on everything. Um, and just, if you don't understand something about people of color, don't assume, it's okay to ask. Thanks for watching. New episodes will be posted every other Friday on our Instagram and YouTube. For more information, go to sunherald.com.